While Reed Shepard was a McDonald's All-American and a highly decorated high school basketball player, him being a clear one and done was far from the expectation, especially playing alongside other big names in Kentucky, but so far he's been every bit of that guy and their best player. Now he doesn't have the ideal measurements, he's not a super explosive athlete, but he's currently having one of the most impactful and efficient seasons from a freshman in college basketball history, and even with some of those numbers likely coming down to earth eventually, he's already done a ton to convince that he's just a very good basketball player on both ends of the floor, and one that can get picked as high as the lottery. Now before we get into some of the specifics of his game, I just want to add some statistical context to what he's done so far because it's pretty wild. Right now he has the 10th highest box plus minus in Bart Torvik's database going back to 08 with 15.3 and that is also the third highest ever for a freshman behind, you know, just Anthony Davis and Zion Williamson. He'd also be just the 8th freshman to have a BPM over 12 which is very realistic at this pace and all the others who did it before him went top 5. Now obviously there are clear differences between him and the others on that list and it's only 12 games so you can take it however you want. But I just had to start here to give a little more historical context to how productive and efficient Reed has been to this point. Now we can start in a lot of different places, but we'll go to his shooting because that's probably the area that helps him get on the floor the earliest at every level. He's currently at 56% from deep on four attempts and is basically the same on catch and shoot threes as well. He has near picture perfect mechanics with great balance, footwork, and consistency, and that served as a great weapon alongside the likes of Rob Dillingham and DJ Wagner within this offense. And I think it's safe to assume that's going to continue in the future, even though shooting nearly 60% is too high of a bar to expect over. 30 games and right now I just want to see him continue to take more honestly it's not like there's a bunch of opportunities that he's turning down or anything but I think both he and the rest of this Kentucky group should look to use this as much as possible and he's definitely on the short list of best shooters in this draft these two teams have combined for 25 26 good fame back for Shepard straight on the next area of his offense that stood out is his passing and really just his overall feel. He's been operating at a high level, he's super unselfish and found his teammates in numerous ways. But I think my favorite part has been what he's done in transition. He's been amazing on hit aheads and immediately pushed the ball up the court when he has an open teammate or a potential advantage. And he's had some long and difficult outlets in there too. Obviously it always helps to get early offense and opportunities if they're there, but this just further shows his feel for the game and unselfishness and a positive his teammates love playing with him for this reason alone. Banks connects. Or knock him down. So Dalton <laughs> Banks, in the second half, they've hit three triples. But Kentucky's game, I, I think you do as well. Just, he's got some toughness to Mitchell. Here's Edwards. Shepard into the front court. Trail three again, Jimmy. Yeah, it's 20 feet away. Stolen by Shepard. And a great looking hand. In the half court, he's taken on a few different roles for this team as a passer, but he's been great as an often sought after connector. He moves the ball quickly and never hesitates to make the extra pass. He reads the floor very well. He has good touch on his passes and often sees things developing before they happen. And it's been a big reason this Wildcats offense has been rolling the way it has. He's also been capable in the pick and roll with good command of his options and finding his teammates on all parts of the floor. Whether it's a simple kick out, hitting the roller on time, or a one handed or overhead skip pass with a lot of velocity, he's done it and done it well. And he should only grow as a playmaker here as he continues to grow as a scoring threat. What a start to the season by Reed Shepard. Suck got He's his team to the title game in 21. Now that was probably my favorite part of his game and something I think is special and that's his ability to make plays defensively and specifically his hands. We always want the plus 10 wingspan and athletic traits for a potential event creation and some of that is important. But Reed's hands, anticipation and feel have been the best in the country and really about as good as anyone I've seen. He's one of 9 players to have a steal percentage of 5 and a block percentage of 3 and if his current numbers were to stand it's just him, Matisse Thybul, Gary Payton in 2nd and Xander McNally 
ability to put those up and it shows everywhere and every time you watch him. He's a solid lateral mover, a good screen navigator and has been an absolute pest on ball coming up with a ton of pokeaways and swipes to get steals both out on the perimeter and on drives. He's even blocked some shots on the perimeter. He's defended post ups pretty well in those limited opportunities and come up with strips there too. It's just been ridiculous how frequently he's been able to do this in nearly every game and his teammates say all of this has been the case in practice too. Oh yeah, he, he get a lot of skills and stuff like that. Practice going against him is like a nightmare when he went defense against you. But I feel like it make you better. You know, that's, I feel like that's a great thing about our team. We all can make each other better. Cause going against him and he get his hand on every ball, get his hand on every pass. Then going against another defender, it's like it's easy for us. He been showing how great of a defensive player he been all year. You know, that's just something he do. Get steals, get blocks, all type of stuff. So it wasn't really a surprise to us, but it make us better for sure. Yeah, it does. It definitely gets annoying. You know, he did that to me a couple of times, you know, while he was guarding me. So I know he's very handsy. And, you know, he just, when he was out there, he showed what he can do. Off the ball, he's grasped his responsibilities and help principles well, whether it's helping on post-ups and making something happen there, tagging a the roller and getting back out to his man or playing passing lanes or just putting everything I've mentioned so far together and quickly changing ends to get a shot for himself or throw a dime to one of his teammates in transition. It's been there in a real way and you can't say enough good about how he's played on this end, even with a few gambles and some young player mistakes definitely mixed in there. With 5.45 remaining. Nice block in the lane. I think Shepard got a piece of that one. Beats it ahead to Dillingham to the basket. Count on the floor. Dillingham trying to trap Brown. There's a turnover. Shepard to the rim. Four point lead for Kentucky. Lachek tried to feed it inside, and Shepard put the. Now going forward, the most obvious and main question with Reed is in what level of creator he is and can be. We see everything else that he does at a high level, but as a listed 6'3 guard, I worry some about his ability to put pressure on a defense and create for himself at the highest levels, and it could be limiting to his overall upside. Now he is a player that can handle some ball handling responsibilities, he's not solely an off guard by any means, but he hasn't yet proven that he can consistently get paint touches or create good looks at the bucket. He has just 10 attempts at the rim in the half court and hasn't gotten to the line very often either, and there have been times where the length and athleticism has caught up to him after he creates that initial advantage and this led to some tougher looks or even a few turnovers. Now the splits are still crazy good right now. He's been pretty good in pick and roll, getting to pull ups from three and in the mid range. He's capable of attacking the shifted defense and he's had some flashes of skip jabs and some quick crosses that I've liked make or miss. And he's at least finished well when he's been at the rim. But down the stretch, I'm curious to see where this goes, especially against better comp. Because if he is a more substantial creator, he becomes really tough to deny. And someone that's likely a top 10 lock and not looked at as more of a high floor kind of guy. But if not, we may still have some questions, we'll see. Kansas by three. Not for long. Shepard with the lead opening up. Nicely done. The other main thing I'll be watching closely is how he performs in one-on-one -on -one situations defensively. As good as he's been, that's the area I think could be a bit more problematic against NBA level creators and it's shown a few times in his games. He's probably too good at everything else that a decent NBA situation would make it less noticeable, but given he's not the quickest in the way that the league targets players, he's probably going to have to prove it early and often. So I'll be curious to see how he looks there in SEC play. but. Other than that, I've struggled to find too many other areas to highlight other than the physicals. Of course, if things just fall off a cliff, we'll have to change our outlook a little, but he's been terrific to this point. Because they're all trying to prove themselves every single day, and that's good for coaching. Now, like we mentioned, the conference game should be interesting for Reed given it's a jump in comp and athletes outside of the Kansas, Miami, and UNC games. And now teams are going to have him fully scouted. So I'll just be watching how he handles that more than any individual matchup that'll be there. And he's also got a really fun story that obviously gets talked about a lot on the broadcast, but his dad, Jeff Shepard, won most outstanding player of the 98 Final Four and two national titles at Kentucky. And his mom, Stacy, was a great player for the Wildcats women's team and she happens to be the all-time steals leader and ranks in the top 10 of several other categories so he kind of gets some of his game from her but reed is living out a pretty dope basketball life right now 
Projecting where to take him is one of the more interesting parts of this draft to me, but I consider him as early as the top 8 to 10-ish into the mid-teens right now. Where things go with him as a creator and how much we think some of the physical limitations will affect him will determine his ceiling and potential role at the next level, but my eyes are telling me the same thing the numbers are, and that is he's a great basketball player and someone that should be highly valued. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you are new, and comment down below some of your thoughts on Reed Shepard's game and where you see him getting picked in this draft. Happy New Year to everybody out there, and as always, I'm Keandre, this is Super Intellect. Until next time, I'm out.